this is interesting, the Mainichi. So, so what this is about is, I think I've talked about this before, how the Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications was discovered to have had, particularly in their broadcast section, TV broadcasters, you know, a bunch of other, the post office, a whole bunch of things. They were discovered partly because the son of the Prime Minister was hired by a dodgy Tohoku like satellite broadcast TV service that was mostly that broke the, the rules on foreign investment had a bunch of other problems so they hired the son of the uh, prime minister to go and set up some cushy dinners with bureaucrats to go and uh, get, get friendly treatment on the approvals of their licenses that they weren't otherwise entitled to and the, the entertainment which they provide to these officials that provided the licenses was in a value far exceeding what bureaucrats are allowed to receive in terms of meals and entertainment and so on it was effectively uh, both hiring the Prime Minister's son for political influence and bribing, outright bribing, to get these illegally administered uh, licenses which they, which they got. And when, the go when this happened and the ministry was sort of basically showing it was outright allowing its officials to be bribed and were behaving in a corrupt fashion, they, they did an investigation too, as there have been any, any other similar cases of excessive entertainment as a form of bribery in exchange for favours by different regulatory divisions, and they found 35 people and something like 78 cases of similar excessive entertainment in exchange clearly for favours. So the Mainichi Shimbun, like the rest of the media, correctly condemning that, uh, you know, this sort of thing has to be stamped out. This is what happened back in the 1990s. My favourite scandal of all time, the No Pants Shabu Shabu restaurant, where the banking surprise inspection regulators would demand that they would basically tip off the banks when they were going to have their loans, when they were going to go and check the bad loan holdings of banks and spot surprise inspections at these banks. And they said, we might be persuaded to tell you when we're going to do these surprise inspections so that you can uh, tidy up the books before we come if you take us to our favorite uh, Shabu Shabu restaurant in Shinjuku where the waitresses don't wear any pants uh, and there's mirrors on the floor you know whatever gets you going but apparently uh these trips to this restaurant which cost you know like thousands of dollars at a time um, the shabu shabu must have been excellent you know resulted in japan's banking bad loan problem being hidden for 10 years based on this restaurant and based on these bribes and, and when it was discovered it had snowballed into such a huge problem it caused the collapse uh, that's why there are almost no banks from the 90s survived they were forced to basically aggregate into the three or four mega banks that there are now they all collapsed under the the the, the bad loans uh thing this is one of the things that caused the bubble to end and the current economic depression in japan to start it was from these government officials getting bribed with entertainment to to you know at this no pun shabu shabu restaurant uh, which helped the banks snowball these the, these bad loans that brought down the financial system in japan and this is a very similar sort of a scandal frankly this is this is basically um entertainment uh for uh communications ministry uh bureaucrats uh, in exchange for favors and so this is being characterized as a whining and dining scandal by all the media outlets and being described as being of course completely inappropriate which it is by the by mainichi but they're not calling it a corruption scandal, which is what it clearly is. I mean, <laughs> this is this is this is money and, and favor and bribes in exchange for inappropriate regulatory treatment, and there's evidence of that happening. Um, they're calling it whining and dining, which is yes, it involved meals, but it was straight up. This was a form of corruption, and you know, I think Mainichi isn't calling it that because they're in the Kisha Club. Um, you know, they only get news stories from the ministry in a cooperation system where they're members of a club where the government can uh, wholesale blacklist journalists and, and and publications that don't cooperate with the way that they want to put out messages. So when the government says, yes, we are punishing 35 uh, bureaucrats for excessive dining, which makes it sound like they just went to an all-you-can-eat and didn't clean their plate or something like that. But no, this was straight-up corruption. But they're using the kind of terminology that the apologetic government is using to sort of minimize the thing which is what what frustrates me a little bit about this you know this is something that we thought in japan or we, people i suppose hope that we were past this is definitely part of the landscape in the 1990s with the you know money corruption politics in japan you would have thought that after the beating the Japan government took after that, that that would have been, especially this case, I mean, again, it's a wonder it hasn't done more damage to the government, not only that it's just a straight up huge corruption scandal, but also the fact that it actually involves the Prime Minister's son. The government's relatively, well, I guess there's so many other things to beat up the government about with the, with the, with the COVID pandemic and the Olympics and everything else. It's not catching as much attention. But, you know, the excessive dining characterization, I think, is letting them off a little bit lightly for what was done. So, yeah, another interesting scandal that tells you a little bit about that, you know, Japan isn't as, as changed as I thought it was. I thought this was something that really ended more or less around the time that I came to Japan, but it turns out not. 
but I appreciate it just because it lets me tell the story of the No Pan Shabu Shabu uh, scandal again, which is my favorite scandal of all time, as you all already may know. But Dan H, is there currently any backlash towards the LDP or Abe for focusing the government, the, the, the economy towards more tourism? No, not at all. Not that I'm aware of. Of course, it's been a hit when the, with the tourism stopping, uh, with the pandemic breaking out. And of course, there's the, the nervousness where there have been tourists and so on. I think I've got a story in here about uh, duty-free places, like basically reporting on tourists that have gone shopping uh, as they are non-residents who have gone shopping in Ginza, where uh, you know their, their passports show that they arrived in the country three days ago when they're supposed to self-isolate for, for two weeks after arriving. Um, so people are like informing on tourists and whatnot right now. And I mean, now is not a good time to be a tourist. But I think that the um, the remarkable success of the tourism thing is seen roundly as a positive. I haven't seen anything negative about that. Uh.